Good morning, children. Let's continue with the factors affecting population. We had already dealt with terrain and climate. We had seen how a flat level plain results, you know, in um, increase and in distribution of population, flat level regions are fertile regions and where water is easily available and infrastructural facilities are easily available and hence we find there is increase in density of population. On the other hand, we saw how the mountainous regions due to its uneven terrain had low density of population. Then we went over to climate. Regions which have temperate climate have high density of population. On the other hand, the Himalayan region, which has a cold climate, or even the deserts where the climate is very hot, has sparse population. Now, let's move over to the next factor which affects distribution of population. Now, that is soil. Soil is a very important factor which determines the density of population. Especially since India is an agricultural country, about 43% of India's population is dependent upon agriculture and allied activities. Now, wherever the soil is fertile, we find there is a higher density of population. On the other hand, regions where the soil is infertile has low density. Let us take the northern plains of India. Now, the northern plains of India, also known as the indo gangetic plain, has a flat terrain, or in other words, the area is flat level land where water is easily available. The soil is very rich and you'll find that this region gets water throughout the year especially from the rivers like the Ganga and its tributaries. Now these rivers are perennial rivers and they have water throughout the year. One from the melting of the snow during the summer season and also from the monsoons. Hence they find they have water throughout the year. At the same time, these rivers are also phase flooding with the result that we find the soil is regularly enriched with fertile alluvium. That's the reason why we find the northern plains of India supports a high density of population. Let's move over to the coastal regions. Now, if you take the coastal regions also, the soil is fertile because the coastal plains are the mouths of many rivers. Many deltas are found along the coastal plains and this too has fertile soil and supports a very high density of population because the soil being fertile it uh, supports, you know, density of population and at the same time you find agricultural activities can easily be carried out. You find some of these coastal plains are also regions where rice cultivation is carried out. Now, what about the Deccan Plateau? Now, the Deccan Plateau is made up of black soil. This black soil is formed due to weathering of volcanic soil. 
which is produced due to the fissure type of volcanic eruptions which had taken place on the Deccan Plateau many, many millions of years ago. So, this black soil is very rich in titaniferous magnetite and especially known for the growth of cotton. Now, if you take Gujarat, Maharashtra, etc., we find these regions are known for cultivation of cotton. On the other hand, the desert regions where we have sandy soils and where there is water which is, you know, um, very, uh, you know, difficult, availability of water is very, very difficult and where, you know, the rainfall is also scanty or if you take the mountainous soil where the soil is immature, the, and the terrain is uneven and even laterite soils. Laterite soils too are immature soils because these are produced in regions of heavy rainfall. Now all these soils are infertile soils and hence you will find density of population in these is low. But in the near future, new technology in agriculture can change the population scenario. For example, you can have a very good example of Israel. Though we find um, Israel too has, you know, infertile soils. Most of the part of Israel is desert. It has been able to convert its land, you know, into, you know, extensive farmlands which are used for horticulture and orchard farming. We can take the example of Israel, where new technology in agriculture has been able to change, you know, the cultivation and agricultural pattern. And hence we find um, we too uh, can put the same methodology into practice in um, many of our, uh, you know, uh, soils here and that may result in uh, a change in distribution of population. So in the near future we can even expect the our you know the Thar desert to be converted into fertile regions. Now here we can see extensive you know uh, cultivation being carried out and we can find crops growing here and uh, this region gets plenty of rainfall so you find uh, extensive um, regions have been uh, turned into cultivable land right now let's move on to the next factor that is water. Now all of us know we cannot do without water. Water is very essential for human survival. Now right from the ancient times if ever we look at the civilizations of the world we would have noticed that most of these civilizations have flourished on the banks of rivers and even along the coastal regions. Take for example in India itself, the Indus Valley civilization which flourished on the banks of the river Indus. Then we have the Ganges, then we have the Nile Valley civilization on the banks of the river Nile or even the Amazon. Now all these, if you look into all these civilizations, we'll find the density of population in all these regions is very very high in other words they've supported civilizations on their banks now next is what are the factors which are necessary for human habitation now adequate rainfall 
Now, adequate rainfall leads to vegetation and vegetation leads to, you know, cultivation. Now, you can have crop growing in regions of uh, adequate rainfall and this itself determines the suitability of a place for human habitation. If water is scarce, you find this place is not suitable for habitation, especially in regions of deserts which face scarcity of water, we find vast areas of deserts remain uninhabited. At the same time, let us look at the rain shadow region. Now, what is a rain shadow? If you would have uh, studied about, you know, orographic type of rainfall, you would have found that the place which is on the opposite side of the rain bearing wind or the windward side is known as a rain shadow region or the leeward side. Now, on the leeward side of the hill or a mountain, we find since the amount of rainfall here is less, the population too is low. So, on the leeward side of the hill or a mountain, we find sparse population. So, where is does population tend to be concentrated? So, population tends to be concentrated in the well-watered river valleys as well as the coastal plains. Now, of course, you would have known the importance of water. We require water for various purposes. Now, we need it for agricultural operations. We need it for irrigation industries, transport, as well as for domestic purposes. And rivers are the greatest source of fresh potable water. Now, you can see this huge expanse of the river. Now, if you look along the banks, you find it will remind you of the ancient civilizations which flourished along the banks of these rivers. Now, this river uh, supplies potable water, which is used for drinking purposes, as well as for um, other purposes like we studied for, you know, industries, for irrigation, agriculture, and so on. Now, let us come to the next factor. The next factor is mineral resources. Now, what are minerals? Now, you might have studied about the various minerals on the earth's crust. You would have studied about iron ore. You would have studied about manganese. Okay. Now, all these are minerals which are found on the earth's crust. Now, you can take, you know, even in India, you find not all states are self-sufficient in mineral resources. There are states which are very rich in certain minerals and others are almost devoid of such minerals. Now, minerals are of no use if they are there on the earth's crust. They have to be brought out by the process of mining and only then will it be a resource. As I've already told you in the previous lesson, coal which is found on the earth's crust is of no use okay but when you bring it out of the earth's crust by process of mining and you use it for various purposes like it is used as a fuel for running factories etc only then will it become a resource so minerals are a great source of attraction for people from different areas which results in higher density of population. So minerals as such, as I said, only if minerals are used as a resource in industries or factories will it attract 
people. Now people come from far off places. If an industry is set up in a particular place, we find it offers employment to people. So you find people from various parts coming to the place where industry is located to find employment and this results in higher density of population. In India, we have the Chota Nagpur Plateau or even say Bihar, Jharkhand, Orissa, etc. where we find that they have rich source of mineral deposits. Whether it is say iron ore, manganese, manganese, dolomite, etc. These regions are very rich in these you know minerals. Minerals at the same time can also be unevenly distributed due to variations in geological structures and various natural processes. At the same time, now if you take say Telangana region or even say Andhra where we find here there are rich deposits of even granite. Now take Rajasthan for example. Rajasthan has many non-ferrous metals. We have Rajasthan has high deposits of silver, then manganese, then mica and in fact Rajasthan is also one of the largest producers of cements. Okay, so you find not all regions are self-sufficient. Some regions like Rajasthan have a higher quantity of certain minerals which may not be found in other areas. But what about the alluvial plains of North India? Now the alluvial plains of North India are agriculturally very very important but they are devoid of economic minerals. They have in fact very less of economic minerals or minerals which are economically very very important though they are agriculturally very very fertile. Now here you can see uh, quarrying is being carried out okay you can find the huge here you have got the trucks here which are carrying the you know the rocks here are broken and they are you know converted into you know smaller pieces and you can see the truck here which is carrying them to places where construction activity is being carried out. Now here again you have the rocks which have been broken into pieces and here's a crane which is used for lifting of these uh, stones and um, this is carried to places where construction activity is carried out. Now, can you see the huge pit here? Now, this huge pit is created because of quarrying. Now, on the surrounding regions, you can find forests. So, you would have wondered, can you see the forests around the surrounding region? Now, you'd be wondering how you have forests on one side. As such, the entire region was covered with forests. But when quarrying took place, now huge, you know, the rocks are broken into pieces and you have, and huge, you know, the pits are left on the ground. This is environmentally, you know, very dangerous because it, first of all, it leads to deforestation. And secondly, you find these huge pits are also very dangerous. Now, the government has brought about certain rules wherein after quarrying is, you know, quarrying is done, these pits should be covered. But many companies flout these rules. 
Okay, children. Now, there are many more factors which um, affect the density and distribution of population, which we will do in the next session. Thank you, children.